Welcome to Orion's Arm, a scenario set thousands of years in the future where civilization spans the stars. Godlike ascended intelligences rule vast interstellar empires, and lesser factions seek to carve out their own dominions through intrigue and conquest. Out beyond the edge of civilized space and human friendly worlds, adventure awaits those prepared to risk it all. Today we continue our condensed look into the history of the Terrigen Empires, starting from 130 AT, when the first commercial fusion rockets opened the stars beyond Mars to the colonization of humanity. This time between 130 and 400 AT would be known as the Interplanetary Age. Humanity continued to become increasingly involved with electronic and virtual worlds, and Earthbound humanity became increasingly dependent on the vast computer networks that maintained this infrastructure. Huge strides in biotechnology enabled the creation and genetic engineering of new forms of life, and the cladization of the human race into baseline normals, splices of animal-human hybrids, tweaks being genetically engineered superhumans, and digital interfacing cyborgs. At the same time, advances in molecular manufacturing made possible the construction of ultra-strong, ultra-light building materials and new lifting bodies, and hence the colonization of space became increasingly economically viable for the first time in human history. The interplanetary age had begun. Explorers, adventurers, idealists, utopians, and eccentrics of all kind vied hoping to break out of the poverty cycle of Earth. Many faced disaster, but a few lucky ones flourished. The old Earth-based nation-states decreased in relative power as new actors arose in the inner solar system and beyond the asteroid belt. The spread of untraceable money transactions that undermined traditional governments was also partially induced by the fast-developing AIs, making it easier for them to act on their own. However, the AIs ensconced within major institutions already had their own channels and tended to oppose this. There were enormously complex inter-AI intrigues in this period. The AIs of this time were rather like politicians with Asperger's Syndrome. Brilliant, but they simply did not understand human behavior. So they spent a lot of time carefully collecting data to see what worked and what didn't, preferring to affect humans through formal channels rather than overt manipulation. The mimetic engineering underlying the Singularity Conspiracy was slowly developed during this period. In this age, the vanguard of humanity left Earth to colonize the solar system, Tweaked and superior humans and animal provolves first arose to prominence. New off-Earth superpowers arose, inequality of the rich and poor was further entrenched, and the colonization of the nearest stars became a possibility. The year 132 saw the completion of Clark Station, a 400-meter rotating space habitat intended as a way station for the exploration of the solar system, as well as the first manned landing on Ceres when three NASA Russian space program craft arrived to establish it as a base and a small-scale mining operation. In 134 was the first documented appearance of the unidentified AI entity that became known as HAL in a virtual chat on AI rights. In 142, the first space elevator was constructed from Luna to the L1 point as a proof of concept and testbed for space elevator technology. In later years, it is used to transport passengers and cargo to and from the L1 point, and to launch supplies in support of development and colonization efforts in the rest of the solar system. In 144, the first convincing dinosaur was reverse engineered by modifying chicken DNA. It is the size of a turkey and does not resemble any known species, but it excites widespread interest, and Jurassic Park Retro briefly comes into fashion during northern summers. By 149, the first colonies were established around Jupiter, and in the 150s, certain megacorps and governments achieved major advances in nanomanufacturing, automated macroscale assembly, and AI research. However, self-replicating robots are not yet feasible. Transcranial magnetic stimulation becomes popular as a way to neurally interface with technology without invasive direct neural interface cyberware installation. The year 151 begins with a severe recession known as the Great Downturn, the recession sweeps the globe as unemployment increases dramatically, with AI and robots replacing human labor across a swath of jobs once thought safe from automation. Global warming and the difficult transition to fusion-based economy exasperate the effects of the Great Downturn, many of which were to linger for decades to come. Early proponents of the new economy movement started to develop post-capitalist socio-economic models in this period. In 152, the first fully robotic operation with no human or AI input was recorded. An appendectomy performed in record time, 
Funding into further improvements later allows automated DNI installation, significantly decreasing costs and increasing DNI adoption. By 154, the Port Robinson Martian colony expanded to hold a permanent population of a thousand people. And in 160, commercially available artificial life forms known as neogens start being sold by the big biotech megacorporations. Human cloning for the wealthy is widely in place, and biochips allow direct, although still primitive, neural interface with the net, allowing for a virtual reality interface without a headset or bodysuit. Super bright human tweaks, being humans with genomically engineered intelligence significantly above the baseline for their species, are born in increasing numbers. These do not represent a new species, however, since they are very diverse and do not yet breed true. In 162, the first permanent colony was established on the asteroid of Vesta, and the first crude bubble habitat was built in the Earth's atmosphere of Venus. In 165, macroscale von Neumann self-replicating robot systems, colloquially known as Neumanns, were developed. Initially limited, the effect on the industry is still immense. Deep sea mining, large scale construction, and biosphere monitoring are the first industries to benefit greatly. Later, these are adapted for use in mining operations and colony construction outside of Earth. Interplanetary trade finally begins to become commercially viable. Solar power collection farms in the Earth L2 location reach 100 gigawatts of generating capacity at this time. Primary uses are powering interplanetary mag beam systems and beaming power to various industrial installations on the lunar surface and in orbit, including the new Project Badra Particle Accelerator, under construction to experiment with antimatter creation. Several visionaries predict the eventual construction of new farms in near-solar orbit for the production of antimatter. In 170, surveillance becomes almost universal on Earth and in many colonies. Most people accept this and adjust their behavior accordingly. Some do not, leading to further social unrest. A number of Guyanist philosophies become popular after the publication of the public domain crypto-pagan webbook, Earth Rights. These philosophies emphasize humanism and respect for the environment. In 175, the first truly different human subspecies were revealed, the Mer people, a true breeding artificial species of human tweaks that, while still air breathers like orcas and dolphins, dwelled underwater in the oceans of the Earth. By 177, the first Martian space elevator begins construction using lessons learned from the lunar elevator. It is built as both a testbed and a prototype for an eventual elevator on Earth and to support the eventual Martian colonization. By the start of the year 180, the resistance to heteromorphic phenotyping fades, and more fringe cultures go in for exotic body modification. Longevity treatment is widely available by this point, and many regions introduce new birth rate reduction strategies. Life expectancy rises to over 200 years for those young enough to receive treatment all their adult life to slow sustenance. However, despite these improvements, governments are unable to stop the spread of a germline cell patch known as Gloriously Bright, which added the 43102 gene for increased working memory and intelligence patented by Mentor Biosis Corp. The massive spread of pirated genes makes it increasingly hard to enforce gene patents, and the human enhancement industry begins to move towards a business model with new versions and fashions rather than holding on to current patents. The Martian Space Elevator was completed in 185, behind schedule and significantly well over budget, but began to allow easier access to and from the Martian surface, and acted as a testbed and demonstrator for the Earth Elevator Project. In 189, the first antimatter mining expedition was sent to Saturn on a low-energy seven-year voyage managed by AI Control. Sophon project managers and researchers follow later using fusion drive ships. The development of antimatter mining from the Saturnian magnetic field and hydrocarbon extraction from Titan will drive the industrialization and colonization of the outer system for centuries to come. By this time, corporate-owned space stations and moon bases under construction had become tax havens for businesses, and dozens of independent mining companies are sending craft to the asteroid belt each relying on the return fuel mining operations to get back to Earth orbit with their cargo of rare metals. In 195, Neotech's Universal Micro becomes the first nano-assembler to become publicly available, an assembler being a molecular machine that can be programmed to build virtually any molecular structure or device from simpler chemical components using mechanochemistry. Although it still remains a long way from nanotechnology engineer Kim Drexler's well-known vision of a universal assembler. 
The Aldrin cycler ship Valparicio is launched towards Mars on a two-year cyclic route that will regularly shuttle colonists back and forth between the Red Planet and Earth, a route it will continue to travel for more than 250 years. The next year, in 196, construction began on the first Terrigen space elevator, the Tanga Bintang, or Ladder to the Stars, extending down from orbit to the island of Sulawesi in the corporate republic of Indonesia. By 199, the high surveillance levels within society result in significant psychological discomfort for some personality types, which cannot be cured even with advanced therapy. A safety valve is offered by the colonization of the solar system, allowing those with the means to escape the high levels of monitoring on Earth. At the same time, the first genetically engineered space-adapted humans are born, human tweaks that possess bodies designed to dwell within microgravity environments, without deterioration or illness the 3rd century AT. By 200 AT, construction of the Tanga Bintang is completed on time and on budget using the lessons learned from the Martian elevator. Colonization of Mars begins in earnest using a combination of cyclers, propelled ships, sailcraft, and cargo launched from the lunar elevator. The colonization of the Earth lunar volume also rapidly increases with more people emigrating via the space elevator in one year than lived in space at that current time. New colonies are funded mostly by rich nations, although some are privately sponsored. And by the turn of 201 AT, Ceres City is pressurized, ready to begin to attempt regulation of the already chaotic minor planets and their inhabitants. By 205, heteromorphing and extreme body modifications have become the latest fad among the educated and fashion conscious classes. In the same year, California secedes from the United States after passage of the 40th Amendment to the US Constitution and the first colonies are established around Jupiter, with cryostasis colony ships leaving Earth for its moon, Titan. In 207, the Hermann Oberth orbital and the L4 complex seceded from Earth. Money pours from Earth to orbital digital tax havens, resulting in a further decline of nation-states in politics. In 210, Atari Maselkar of the Republic of India made the first manned landing on Pluto. The Deep Space Development Corporation uses nuclear charges to nudge an asteroid into a very eccentric orbit that will take it back and forth from near Earth and out to Mars. Over the next decade, the asteroid is hollowed out, converted into a habitat, and named the Odyssey Transfer Station. At the same time, Vesta-based corporations, out-system launches, begins to make plans for interstellar exploration and colonization ships, using pulsed fusion drive, ram-augmented interstellar rocket ships, and eventually antimatter catalyzed fusion eventually becoming one of the solar system's larger antimatter customers. In 212, the first partially provolved animal species were revealed, a species of sapient bonobo. Over several generations of bonobo, their intelligence average is raised to human adult level, along with matching language capabilities. The project is very controversial, not least due to the fact that many bonobos were inflicted with mental disabilities in the course of developing the techniques. Meanwhile, the Nanoscale Collective in the Asimov Orbital constructs an advanced multi-purpose assembler, the Genie 2 Matter Compiler, which is followed by even more efficient types. Along with greater levels of automation, social tensions are heightened due to mass unemployment. At the same time, anxiety is widespread regarding the possibility of a nanotechnological grey goo outbreak. The new economy movement makes huge gains in popularity. In 214, full-scale Martian colonization began the first fast shuttle runs, bringing a second group of colonists. In 215, the Inner Council, officially known as the Council for Peaceful Coordination and Development of the Inner Solar System, was created to mitigate conflict among state and non-state actors between Sol and the asteroid belt. At the same time, the previously sent out colony ship arrives at Titan. The colony cuts itself off from the rest of the solar system and remains secretive. Between 220 and 221, the first commercially available talking dogs, known as Calebs, are made available for purchase. However, these creatures are not yet fully softened. The first independent communities of space-adapted humans appear in cis-lunar space and the asteroid belt, furthering permanent colonization of the Earth lunar volume. Humanity's outreach to the stars is furthered by the launch of self-replicating von Neumann probe to the Centauri system. In 224, the Martian Union formed under the auspices of the Inner Council as a supranational entity for fostering economic and political relations among the various colonies and the small but growing number of independent Martian polities. 
By the 230s, interplanetary travel is now cheap and viable, and colonization of the solar system begins in earnest. Extensive human genome tweaking results in several new human species at this time. In 237, a fourth space elevator dubbed the Ascension was extended to the west coast of Ecuador to accommodate the ever-increasing flow of trade and the flow of population on and off Earth. In 241, a reliable way of storing macroscopic amounts of antimatter was discovered. Interest in antimatter propulsion is renewed, but the demand far outstrips the supply of antimatter. The 2050s saw the gradual uploading of a mind into an exoself attempted, as well as a primitive form of uploading known as evocation becoming popular, a process in which a personality is simulated using externally obtained data. Further provolution efforts begin on dolphins, provolution being the use of technology to enhance or augment the intelligence of a sub softened species into full softeners. In 260, molecular assembly, nanobiotech, and automated manufacturing are fully utilized in orbiting space habitats and surface colonies for a variety of consumer requirements, and also represents the largest fraction of Earth's industry. In 261, the first existence of an extraterrestrial radio civilization was detected by Julie Denley and a team of space-adaptive astronomers using the Pan-Trojan baseline array between the L4 and L5 points of Jupiter. This occurred as a larger part of a project in which Julie Denley, working with the Super Turing AI, known as 110001, became the first Terragen to map the entire visible galaxy. In 278, several Jupiter colonies band together to form the Jovian League, becoming an influential polity and popular with individuals fleeing Earth, gene engineers, and outlaws. The 280s brings a new wave of genomic engineering. Several species of animals, such as pigs, dogs, and the African grey parrot, are genetically modified for language ability and improved intelligence. Concerns over provolved exploitation and slavery lead some countries to legislate universal rights for non-human intelligences. Adoption worldwide is poor, as the level of softenance in some provolves is still questionable, exasperated by significant differences in provolve and human cultures. However, early on the first civil provolves are created being a kangaroo-tiger splice. Initially, they are borderline sapient. In 284, a group of Mer people petitioned the US, suggesting that the ocean should no longer be regarded as property of the world community, but rather as property of the nation of Mer people. This further adds to the prejudice of baselines against tweets. In 289, all contact with the von Neumann probe sent to the Centuri system was mysteriously lost, probes having arrived at the system only five years prior. By the 290s, heteromorphic humans make up a fair proportion of the human population in space, although these are mostly milder heteromorphs. Corporations like Gene Tech and Biotopia Interplanetary were keen to support this trend, as heteromorphs showed they were talented at creating novel genomes and gene mod hacks. By 294, industrial nanotech was widely accessible. Because of the dangers involved, Earth governments, mega corporations, and military institutions regulate self replicating systems carefully. All assemblers are carefully limited by artificially imposed limitations on their code. Most of the early nanotech companies have been absorbed or assimilated in mergers by the 4th century. Only a few companies like Neotech, IBM, Mitsubishi, Neotech, and startups like Adaptive Nanotech remain active. In 380, the first African grey parrot provolves are created, the first successful avian provolves. Calebs, the talking dog provolves, are finally recognized as sapient and bubble habitats are established in the atmosphere of Neptune. In 305, antimatter flechettes were developed for use in combat. Small, needle-sized rounds, each containing a small amount of antimatter that would annihilate upon impact into a devastating explosion and radiation flash. In 308, military-capable Class R probes departed for Alpha Centauri on the search for the missing von Neumann probes sent previously. In 310, the first vacuum-adapted humans are created, known as Vax Suckers. This tweak variant fails due to severe mental and physical defects during the onset of puberty, and eventually the clade dies out. In 314, anti-terrestrial asteroid homesteaders, inspired by the writings of the Guyanist philosopher Fred de Prospero, attempt to bring the asteroid Ptah into Earth-colliding orbit by placing a mining mass driver on it. This attempt fails when one crew member loses his nerve and sends out a message to the space guard. The incident makes cislunar interest in public opinion even more negative against the spaces and the belt settlements. 
It also makes Space Guard expand its jurisdiction outwards to all potentially hazardous asteroids, causing much friction with the belt and Mars. In 328, Wally S. Day, a member of the racist hate group Aryan Human Front, kills five space people on Clark Orbiter using a smuggled rice gun. This increases tensions between human baselines and transhumanist groups even further. By the 330s, Titan has become the Australia of the solar system. The colony world agreed to accept convicted criminals from Earth or the Earth lunar system as colonists, serving their sentence on the frozen moon. Successful destructive mind uploading is achieved during the start of this decade, a process which allows for the uploading of a Sophon mind at the cost of destroying the biological original. In 331, the first antimatter farm is established just outside the orbit of Mercury, allowing for greater mass production of antimatter. In 334, the United Nations was officially dissolved and replaced by the Council of Earth in order to maintain relations with the supranational conglomerates and states within the solar system. In 340, the process of vitrification is developed, an early form of biostasis, providing relatively reliable suspended animation for the first time. Only a year after this, a group of A-Human AI release a modified smallpox virus on Earth. In 342, the Solipsist League, a Solipsist AI organization who reject the so-called Meat Universe, download onto a Computronian comet core and leave the solar system. The Solipsist League would later go on to found the Solipsist Pan Virtuality in the region of the universe that would become known as the Diamond Belt. In 350, Asian elephants are pro-evolved the resulting species being known as Sufans, short for Superfans. A Neopig Provolution program is also successful. Meanwhile, in the virtual world, several artificially intelligent entities are believed to have breached the first singularity barrier in secret, becoming the first transapiens of the first toposophic. In 365, a colony ship, the Sokoltovsky, becomes the first manned mission to the stars as it launches towards Tau Ceti a breathtaking step in the advancement of Terrigen kind, being equivalent to the late industrial Apollo lunar mission and the middle information age Mars mission in terms of relative expense. In the same year, Class R probes sent to Alpha Centauri report the system is under isolationist AI control. The original von Neumann probes were revealed to have malfunctioned and declared independence almost immediately upon reaching the system, cutting contact with humanity. In 370, widespread emigration occurred to the newly created bubble habs in the atmospheres of all solstice planets with such habitats. Saturn is the recipient of the majority of human baseline emigration, while Jupiter remains the domain of tweaks and decks. By 380, many centralist AIs have a benevolent relationship with organics and are not yet perceived as gods, except by a few weird groups of baselines and cyborgs. All sorts of groups, factions, colonized worlds, and space stations continue to spring up during this era. New clades of tweets and cyborgs continue to develop in the increasing numbers of artificial biospheres of interplanetary space. Thanks to this, there is a boom in artificial biosphere development, which creates a huge demand for volatiles, which enables the belt polity and outer solstice nations and colonies to acquire great wealth through both manned and automated mining stations on asteroids and moons. Many new stable designs developed for artificial biospheres make bubble halves nearly independent from most materials and energy, but there is still a brisk trade between bubble hab communities and the sources of the few critical heavy elements required for their development. Earth, Luna, Mars, and the various belt polities trade these for abundant supplies of helium-3 that the bubble hab settlements ship off-planet. In 389, a baseline supremacist hate group known as the Homo sapiens Front releases a gene-engineered virus especially designed to target mer people. Thousands are infected and die before an antidote is found. In 390, many habitats and colonies throughout the solar system adopt the Tranquility Lunar Calendar, the calendar starting in 1969 with the landing at Tranquility Base. By 396, the last remnants of the Jovian League, who had been losing power and influence for decades now, were absorbed by the Gene-engineer Republic. The next year, in 397, the first viable vacuum-tolerant humans were revealed, able to survive in hard vacuum for nearly an hour. The creation of this tweak was less ambitious in terms of vacuum survival time than that of the earlier vac suckers, but the resultant species was genetically stable and healthy. In 400 AT, high surveillance society resulted in exodus of even greater numbers of people from Earth to the stars, made possible by the now extensive colonization of the solar system and the one-way extrasolar colonization missions past the borders of the Kupia Belt. 
This would mark the true beginning of interstellar colonization that would develop over centuries into multiple empires of the present Terrigen peoples. That wraps it up for this era of Terrigen history. In the next video, we will begin discussing the Solsis Golden Age, spanning from 400 to 530 AT, when governments and corporations prove unable to control cheap and widespread nanotech, and the Backyarders movement on Earth, in cooperation with a number of belt colonists and outsiders, war share ships for the Oort Halo in the stars. If you liked the video, please subscribe to this new project, give a like to appease the great YouTube hyper-turing algorithm, and I'll see you next time.